Welcome to the channel, everybody. Today, we're gonna to be going over every setting on the rotary switch of your Fluke 115 meter. All of your technical specifications are gonna be in your manual. That's not gonna be covered here today. Really just every setting that this little knob turns to, we wanna go over and demonstrate practical application of how to perform the test. Things to keep in mind are your lead positions for your meter. Almost every test, your leads will be configured in this manner. The only time that you'll switch this red lead and to the one that has the A above it for amperage are these two positions down here. There's three different tests that you'll do in series. Really know the difference between series, parallel, polarity for understanding the demonstration of all these tests. First, we're gonna start out with our volts AC. Polarity of your leads does not matter for this test. Your leads can be in either configuration and you will still get the same reading. Now you'll notice there's a Hertz here in yellow. That's indicating that you'll wanna press the yellow button to try that test. Again, polarity doesn't matter for this test, 60 Hertz. Next setting is for volts DC. That's what this solid and dashed line above your voltage is indicating, that it's specific to DC. DC tests are gonna be polarity specific. Red to red, black to black. We'll see what that will get 12 volts. If I have my leads reversed, it's not a big deal, but we wanna pay attention. Our meter is trying to tell us that our polarity is switched somehow. So we wanna be cognizant of that when performing this test. Next is for millivolts AC and DC. I don't have a good way to demonstrate the millivolt AC reading. Our millivolts DC is in yellow. So I'll go ahead and hit the yellow button and then I can make a millivolt reading. I'm reading 83 millivolts DC. Notice again, polarity for a DC measurement is critical and our meter is indicating that. Next, resistance. Measuring resistance doesn't have to be with a resistor, although that's one way that we'll demonstrate it. You can also demonstrate it with a load. Resistance and a load in the eyes of electricity are the same thing. Polarity is not gonna be crucial to this test. Our resistor will flow in either direction. I have a 10 ohm resistor that I'm making a measurement with, but I can also use this, say I wanna measure the unloaded resistance of this light bulb. I can do that as well. Polarity in this instance is not critical to our measurement. We can measure it in either direction and come back with the same measurement. Next is continuity. Continuity is just demonstrating that we have electron flow from one end to the other. It'll also produce an audible tone so that way we don't have to look at our meter when we're measuring for continuity. It's just trying to tell us that there's some kind of flow. Next up on our meter, we have diode and capacitance measurements. Our initial setting is for diode. Polarity will be critical for this. We're gonna wanna start with our flow set up like this. And this is indicating the amount of voltage drop across the diode, 500 millivolts of DC voltage drop. We'll also want to test our diode in the reverse direction, should say OL, meaning that there's no flow, there's no backflow in this specific type of diode. There's a lot more to diode testing than this, but you're running a mill diode, that's how you perform that test. Next is for capacitance. Again, it's in yellow, indicating that we'll need to hit this yellow button to measure the capacitance. This capacitor is rated for a thousand microfarads. We wanna see if this capacitor is capable of holding that much. You're gonna go ahead and attach your leads to your capacitor after it's been discharged or you could hurt the meter. And we're gonna give it a second once it's hooked up. It's gonna charge the capacitor and then let us know, okay, it's capable of holding a little over 1100 microfarads. There's a lot more to testing capacitors. I would really recommend looking through the technical manual for all the different steps of how to safely discharge your capacitor, but that's the test setting for it. For these next series of tests, the test will be performed in series with the circuit as opposed to parallel. If you're having trouble with that, let me know, I can make a video clearing it up. If you're having trouble or understanding any of this, let me know down in the comments. I'll make more videos. I wanna make sure everyone understands how to perform these tests correctly 
and safely so that we're all on board. Now I have switched my meter leads over to the amperage position. My red lead is on the amperage position and I'll be testing in series. Now, when your meter is in this configuration, you can easily damage electronic components and you can easily damage the fuse in your meter. You can make it pop, okay? This meter is rated for specifically 10 amps. It is a quick acting fuse, which is helpful to help prevent any damage from happening, but it can happen. Basically in this configuration, your meter is acting the same thing as a jumper wire. And if you used a jumper wire and you started jumpering around all different kinds of things and you weren't sure exactly what you were doing, you could potentially damage something. So please be careful and cognizant of how you're making these measurements. The first one that we're gonna start with, this is amperage AC. So we're going to be measuring how much current is being drawn from an alternating current source. I have an alternating current load and an alternating current source, and I want to measure the current and I'm using it as a jumper wire. We can see I've got about 200 milliamps of current being drawn by this light bulb. Okay. You'll notice a hurt symbol down here under this alternating current amperage. That's so that we can measure frequency or the hertz of our alternating current in series with our load. This test will be performed the same as the last one, but now we're getting a measurement of Hertz as opposed to current. Next measurement that we're gonna be doing is amperage DC. Again, we have that A for amperage, DC for solid and dash line. My leads are configured as essentially a jumper wire to measure my current draw. We can see here that polarity is being indicated by our leads. Our meter is telling us that for our flow, showing that we're drawing two amps of DC current. Anyways, thank you so much for watching the video. If you have any questions, please let me know now in the comments. I will do my best to clear up every single thing. There is so much to testing into meters and every little detail. I really suggest that you go through your owner's manual and look at you know what Fluke has to say about doing all of these measurements. I understand that sometimes technical manuals can be hard to understand. I myself am a visual learner and learn much better from seeing someone perform the actual test and explaining it than simply reading it. Let me know. I really hope that helps and I'll catch you on the next one.